ever feel like you're like racing towards a goal but your brain's kind of stuck in a bumper car like constantly getting sidetracked mm -hmm. that's us today we're tackling consistency especially for those of you who uh like me kind of thrive on you know novelty yeah and we're going to unpack why that can feel like such an uphill battle sometimes and like more importantly how to make those brain quirks work for you not against you well and what's so fascinating about this is that um you know for many people this struggle with consistency it's not a willpower thing right it's actually about how adhd kind of uniquely shapes the brain's executive functions okay so executive functions for anyone who's like new to this whole thing what are we even talking about when we say that so think of your executive function as like your brain's control center right yeah it's the part that's responsible for planning for organizing for starting tasks seeing them through um but for folks with adhd that control center it often operates on like a bit of a delay okay which can make you know those everyday tasks uh that much more challenging so is it kind of like trying to conduct a symphony orchestra where each musician's on a totally different tempo exactly yeah and you can imagine how that might lead to you know feeling overwhelmed or frustrated even when you're genuinely motivated right. to accomplish something so it's not just like a try harder thing right it's like you're saying there's something actually different about the way that my brain might need to approach this precisely and one of the key differences um is how adhd brains respond to novelty mm. So while some people find routines calming, predictable. Right. Yeah. If you've got ADHD, routine can sometimes feel like a straitjacket. Yeah. Your brain is craving those bursts of novelty, those like unexpected detours. Okay, yes. This is like so relatable right now because like I can map out my entire week, color coded everything. But then the second some shiny new project or idea comes up, it's like all bets are off. And suddenly I'm like knee deep in something completely unrelated to my to-do list. It's like my brain has this like built-in novelty radar mm. that just overrides everything else. And that's actually like a perfect example of how those executive functions can get um, you know, a little wonky. Okay. It's not just about getting distracted. Right. It's it's that initial impulse to like jump into whatever feels most stimulating in the moment. So how do we wrangle that impulse though? Like, is it even possible to make routines feel less routiney mm -hmm. <laughs> when your brain thrives on that unexpected element? That's where things get really interesting. So remember, um, I don't know, when you were a kid, and suddenly like cleaning your room became a thrilling scavenger hunt. Oh my gosh, yes. Or or turning chores into like a competition with my siblings, game on. Exactly. Yeah. And that's tapping into this powerful principle called gamification. Because ADHD brains are wired to seek out rewards. Oh, gosh. They're wired to seek out novelty. So if you can find ways to inject those elements into your routines, All right. you're literally speaking your brain's language. So instead of clean the entire kitchen, it's like, Beat the clock while loading the dishwasher. Bonus points if you can sort the recycling by color. Now you're getting it. And those rewards, they don't have to be huge, by the way. Even those small wins, they trigger that dopamine release, which is crucial for ADHD brains. Speaking of dopamine, can we like dive into that a little bit? Because it always comes up in these discussions, but I'm always curious, like how exactly does dopamine play into this whole consistency puzzle? So dopamine is often called the uh, feel-good neurotransmitter. Right. And it plays a key role in motivation and reward. Mm. But ADHD brains process dopamine a bit differently. So think of it like this. For neurotypical brains, dopamine releases like this gentle stream. Okay. But for those with ADHD, it's more like a wave pool. You get these bigger splashes, but also longer periods of calm. So that's why something that might motivate someone like, you know, for weeks on end might barely hold my attention for an afternoon. Exactly. Interesting. Because your brain's not getting that same steady stream of dopamine. <sighs> okay. And this is where understanding that difference can be so empowering. Because it's not about blaming yourself or saying like, oh, I'm just lazy. It's about recognizing that your brain might need a little extra boost to stay engaged. And those, those strategically placed rewards, even tiny ones, can make a world of difference. This is like already making so much sense, but okay, let's say like someone's listening to this and thinking, okay, I'm ready to like ditch the chaos, embrace consistency. Where do they even start? Cause like knowing that your brain needs that dopamine boost, that's one thing, right. but like actually doing it feels like a whole other challenge. You're absolutely right. Um, it's not always easy to translate, you know, understanding into action. Right. But here's the good news. You don't need this like 
complete life overhaul to start building consistency. Okay. In fact, it's often better to start small. Really small. Which I like smaller than organizing my sock drawer small. Possibly even smaller. Think micro habits. Okay. Those tiny changes that are so simple, they almost feel like silly. So instead of conquer my entire to-do list, how about write down three tasks for tomorrow before I go to bed? Okay. Or drink a glass of water as soon as I wake up. Okay. These micro wins, they create a sense of accomplishment, right? Right. And yes, you get those little dopamine boosts. So you're basically like tricking your brain into craving consistency by making it feel rewarding one tiny step at a time. Precisely. And the beauty of these micro habits is they're less intimidating. Right. They're easier to integrate into your existing routine. You're not trying to climb Mount Everest on day one. Mm. You're just taking that first step on the trail. I like that. I like that a lot. But I think we'd be you know, remiss if we didn't mention like the fear of messing up. Right. Because what happens if, you know, life throws a wrench in your like perfectly crafted plan and you miss a day or three or a week? Mm -hmm. Does that mean like you failed at this whole consistency thing? This is such an important point and it ties into this, like this common trap of all or nothing thinking. Right. Where it's so easy to fall into that, well, I messed up, so I might as well just give up completely. Right. But the truth is consistency isn't about perfection. Okay. It's about progress. Okay. It's about recognizing that you know, setbacks are inevitable. Right. And they don't have to derail your entire journey. So ditch the self-flagellation if you like sleep through your morning meditation or forget to like log your food for a day. Absolutely. Yeah. Instead of like dwelling on the misstep. Yeah. Acknowledge it. Learn from it if you can. And then, you know, just gently guide yourself back on track. Okay. It's about building a sustainable system. Right. Not striving for unattainable perfection. I like it. But let's be real, like sometimes we need a little extra help, right? Mm -hmm. To stay on course. And that's where like accountability comes in, right? Absolutely. Having a support system or some kind of structure in place, it can be incredibly helpful, especially, you know, when motivation wanes or those like those unexpected distractions pop up. What are some like effective ways to kind of like build in that accountability without feeling like you're like back in school and like you're dreading a bad grade? Because shame is not a motivating factor. You're so right. The key is to find what feels um, supportive and encouraging for you, not punishing. Right. For some people, it might be an accountability buddy. Yeah. Someone with, you know, similar goals who understands the unique uh, challenges of ADHD. Yeah. Others might find structure in like a support group or even an app that you know tracks their progress, gives them those little reminders. So it's about figuring out what works for you and your own personal style, not trying to force yourself into like a one size fits all approach. Exactly. And remember the goal of accountability is to provide that support mm -hmm. that encouragement, not to, you know, add another layer of pressure or self judgment. This has been so helpful, but you know, we've talked a lot about like the internal stuff, right? Like brain chemistry, impulse control, all that. But what about like those external distractions, mm -hmm. like those squirrel moments that can just totally derail, like even the best laid plans. How do we tame that distraction monster? That's a great question. And you know, we can't control everything in our environment, right? But there are definitely some strategies that you can use to you know, at least minimize distractions. Okay. And kind of create a more focused, friendly space. Okay. So like beyond the obvious, like, you know, turn off your phone advice, which let's be real, is not always practical. Right. What else can we do to create that like focus conducive zone? So it can be surprisingly helpful to designate a specific workspace. Okay. And this doesn't have to be like a fancy home office. It can even just be like a corner of your kitchen table. Right. The key is, you want to train your brain to associate that space with focus so that when you sit down, it's like flipping a switch. Time to work. Okay. And what about like those of us who kind of thrive in a little bit of background noise? Mm. Like, are there certain types of sound that can actually like boost focus? Mm -hmm. Or is silence really golden? This is where it gets really personal. Yeah. Some people really do find complete silence to be ideal. Right. Others focus better with some kind of ambient noise in the background. Mm -hmm. Experiment with different options, mm -hmm. you know, like instrumental music, nature sounds, mm -hmm. even white noise can be helpful for drowning out other distracting sounds. And honestly, noise canceling headphones are a game changer. Right. They've been a lifesaver for me personally. Noise canceling headphones, they really are like a superpower. Mm -hmm. Speaking of superpowers, I've had a, a lot of success with like the Pomodoro technique. 
Mm -hmm. which feels like it was designed for brains like mine that you know love a timer right and like a little sense of urgency it's a fantastic tool yeah especially for those who you know thrive on those short bursts of focused energy yeah so for anyone who like hasn't tried it it's basically you set a timer for 25 minutes of like totally focused work followed by a five minute break right. and then you just like repeat that cycle a few times then you take a longer break so it's like building in those mini rewards into your workflow and that's exactly why it aligns so well with you know the adhd brain it yeah. embraces those like natural energy fluctuations instead of fighting against them totally but you know even with all the best like productivity hacks and routines in place there's one more element we got to talk about which is self-care mm -hmm. it's so easy to get like you know caught up in the hustle and just forget that like our brains and bodies they need a little tlc right. <laughs> to like actually function at their best totally yeah you've hit on such a crucial point i mean it's like trying to run a marathon without ever stopping to, you know, hydrate or refuel. Yeah. Self-care is not a luxury. It is an essential ingredient for sustainable consistency. Ooh, I love that phrase, sustainable consistency. It's not about like pushing yourself to the brink. It's yeah. about creating a lifestyle that like actually supports your goals. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. And and you know, self-care is going to look different for everyone. Right. For some people, it's prioritizing sleep mm -hmm. or incorporating, you know, movement into their day. For others, it might be making sure they have time for those creative pursuits or just like getting out in nature. Right. The key is to really identify what truly nourishes you, what recharges you. Yeah, it's about like tuning into those individual needs. Like what are the things that actually fill your cup mm -hmm. so that you can like you know, actually sh show up for yourself and, and for your goals. I couldn't have said it better myself. Mm -hmm. You know, it's about recognizing that self-care is an investment. Yeah. In your overall well-being, which ultimately that's what sets you up for success, you know, in all areas of your life. This has been like seriously such an eye-opening conversation. So as we're like <laughs> wrapping up this this deep dive into consistency, what's like the, uh, the one thing you want our listeners to kind of carry with them? You know, if there's one thing I hope listeners take to heart, it's that consistency. It's not about achieving some like mythical state of perfection. Right. It's about progress. It's about self-compassion. Mm -hmm. And it's about finding what works for you because we were all wired so differently. Right. What works for one person might not work for another. Exactly. So experiment, right. you know, be kind to yourself mm. and celebrate those small victories along the way. You're on a journey, not in a race. Beautifully said. And to our amazing listeners, as you're continuing on your consistency journey, here's a final thought to kind of ponder. We've talked a lot about how, you know, ADHD brains, they, they crave novelty. Right. What if instead of viewing that as like a hurdle to overcome, we could actually harness that love of the new, of the exciting to actually fuel those long-term habits that we're trying to build? That's such a good question. It really challenges us to, you know, rethink those assumptions, doesn't it? It really does. And on that note, we will leave you with that thought-provoking question. Until next time, keep exploring, keep experimenting, and keep embracing that like amazing, unique wiring of your incredible brain. 